Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Mongo Super P from Detailer Bases. Let's do this. This is the Mongo Super P from Detailer Bases, the signature base of our friend and compadre, Chris Volpini, who has uh, graciously lent me this after just getting it a little while ago. Featuring a beautiful ash body, Aguilar Electronics, and a status graphite neck with their faux maple fingerboard and block inlays. This is a really awesome base. Up at the headstock, we have hip shot tuners, and down at the bridge, is a Babix bridge, a very cool bridge. And on this base, you have the option to string through the body as well as through just the bridge. And it's strung through the bridge today. The strings on this base are uh, SIT or SIT strings. Uh, I'm very excited to check these strings out and we may be uh, looking more into those strings in the future. So keep an eye out for that. The P pickup that's used here is the Aguilar 60s P. And then the humbucker down at the bridge position is their uh, super double, I believe is what it's called. Either way, both pickups are very, very cool. And these are paired to a passive control option. We have a volume, volume, tone configuration with a producer switch. Now the body shape on this base is a 51P and this is a slab body. But I believe Mr. Taylor can make a uh, body in whichever way you want. So he made my strat base, if you remember that video. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and link that video in the description. That is a fun base and a uh, definitely a special base with the little claw selector switch. That was a real special touch. So that base definitely has a special place on my uh, permanent collection. Thank you, Dave, for that. But this is another one of his creations, and I think that this is just awesome. The Status Graphite Neck, which, uh, you know, they make awesome stuff. We've looked at some other Status Graphite parts, but this particular neck is just so cool with the faux maple fingerboard. I think it looks pretty convincing. I mean, you know, it's not wood. It's a synthetic material, but I think it looks pretty convincing. And I mean, the fretwork and playability of this instrument is great. And I think it sounds great as well. I can't wait to show you what it sounds like. But first, let's go ahead and turn it around. Around back, you just see some beautiful things here. You see the string ferrules for if you wanted to string through the body. This beautiful finish, it's a two-tone sunburst on this beautiful, beautiful ash body. And this neck, carbon fiber. I'm a big fan of cars and motorsports, and I, I love carbon fiber. I think it's so neat. And getting carbon fiber necks on a base or something is just like, it's so cool. I just, I just love that stuff. So uh, really cool spec'd out carbon fiber neck on this base. Hip shot tuners again at the headstock and not much else to see, but a lot to admire. This appears to be a one piece body. I, I didn't mention that. Yeah, this is a one piece. Beautiful grain on this. So very nice, very nice. I also love the blacked out look of everything. Every single piece of hardware is blacked out and that's that's pretty badass. Weight wise, this instrument comes in at around nine pounds on the dot, which is not bad. It's not too heavy, not too light, right in the middle there. And it is very well balanced with the carbon fiber neck and hip shot hardware at the headstock. Well, enough talking. Let's go ahead and see what this bass sounds like. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, this is a very cool base, and I just love these Status Graphite necks. I've never been disappointed by one, and I've played probably several by now. I have one on my Stingray EX, a fretless one, and I have one on the Detailer uh, Strat base, which we constructed uh, over a year ago now. I think that video is uh, over a year old. Either way, I'll post that video again in the description below, but this is something to admire. This is... This is a beautiful instrument. 
this uh, combo of the Aguilar 60s P pickup and the Super Double is very cool. and check out these pickups individually. Let's start out with the P. This P pickup definitely gets the fat P tone. It is a reverse P, so you definitely get a little bit of a different voicing, but it is in the appropriate position and I think it sounds great. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn the tone down to about 50%. Right there. Here's the tone down all the way. Very nice, very nice. Let's go ahead and turn the bridge pickup back up and we're gonna turn the neck pickup down, turn the tone back up, and let's check out this bridge pickup. That got bright, visually. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the tone down to about 50% now. Listen to those harmonics ring. Ooh, that's nice. I never usually play that kind of stuff on, on camera, but yeah, th these harmonics just ring and sing on this bass. It's a beautiful thing, and I just rhymed a lot. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and turn the tone down all the way now. Nice. 
Very nice indeed. Let's go ahead and bring the neck pickup back into the mix, turn the tone back up, and do it all again. Now, the inspiration for this bass was actually the Rocco Prestia signature. Uh, Chris spec'd everything out, and he's a big fan of Rocco Prestia, who sadly passed away uh, not too long ago. But uh, yeah, this was a Rocco-inspired bass in many ways. Uh, he was uh, the caretaker of the Rocco signature, the Conklin, that I had featured on my channel after... Uh, I essentially sold it to him, and now I have it back though, so we'll be seeing a video on that. turn the tone down to about 50%. Very nice, very nice. Now let's go ahead and slap it. <laughs> You know what, I'm going to go ahead and roll off the bridge pickup a little bit, bring that to about 50%, and let's slap it one more time. This is cool. This is a cool bass. Uh, lastly, actually, you know what? Let's play it with a pick. Let, let, let's try that one time. Uh, where's my pick? Let me go get my pick. 75 years later. So keeping the configuration as is with the bridge pickup rolled off about 50% in volume, we're going to go ahead and play it with our felt pick. trying still trying finally let's go ahead and throw some ah, blah, 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 blah. finally let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass Mm-hmm. 
here are my final thoughts on the Detailer Mongo Super P. This is an awesome base. Uh, the specs are really cool, and just the combination of parts coming together to form something that's just awesome is... This is an awesome base. I love the Status Graphite Neck with the Faux Maple Fingerboard, the Aguilar Electronics, the Passive Control Setup that still gives you a lot of flexibility, and the Producer Switch. Oh! What does it do? It is just a dummy switch that does nothing. It was originally intended to do something else, but uh, we decided to just leave the switch there and it looks pretty cool, but it is not really functional at this time at least. I was thinking about maybe doing something, but Chris insisted that we leave it as is, so I will comply with his wishes, but this is our Mongo Super P from Detailer Guitars. Awesome collection of parts made into an awesome bass. So a big thank you to Chris for letting me borrow this bass. A uh, big thank you to Dave for making such a cool bass and putting everything together. And thank you all for watching. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Mongo Super P from Detailer Basses. And as always, until we groove again.